It is Monday, August 3rd, 2020, and you are tuned in to Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. It was a rough weekend for racing. A ton of stuff got canceled or postponed by poor weather across the country. Uh, you saw stuff in Pennsylvania, stuff in Ohio, stuff all over the place uh, got knocked out because of the weather. Both nights of the World of Outlaws sprint cars were lost at Wayne County in Plymouth, plus Saturday night's World of Outlaws late model race from Kokomo. Indiana Sprint Week also lost both the Lincoln Park Speedway night and the Bloomington show, but we did get to see some racing, including the full weekend of all-star action friday night the all-star circuit of champions headed to the 34 raceway in iowa with kyle larson on a five race win streak the last time someone not named kyle larson won an all-star event was on july 11th at sharon speedway when kale conley won the ohio sprint speed week event larson again went quick time in qualifying finished fourth in his heat and fourth in the dash for the feature it was Corey eliason on the pole with austin mccarl to his outside larson started fourth at the start eliason settled in out front with uh, mccarl second and Larson quickly to third. By lap six, Larson had moved past McCarl and was then after Eliason for the lead. The Rudine 26 of Eliason was able to hold off Larson until lap 13 when the 57 rolled the high side to take the top spot. As the leaders worked traffic, Eliason tried to keep Larson honest for a few laps, but Young Money was just too good. He drove away over the final half of the race to take win number six in a row. Eliason finished second with Tucker Klassmeyer third, Austin McCarl fourth, and Gio Selzy fifth. Points leader Aaron Reitzel finished the night in 10th, which was his fourth double-digit finish in a row. The struggles for Reitzel have allowed Eliason to close in the standings with the lead being 114 points after 34 raceway. Saturday, the All-Stars moved to Knoxville with a big field of 46 cars in attendance. Besides the full All-Star roster and the Knoxville regulars, there were also a bunch of other teams on the property to get ready for the next few weeks of racing at the Sprint Car Capital of the World. Kyle Larson again went quick time, finished second in his heat race and second in the dash. That put him third at the start with Gio Selzy and Linton Jeffrey on the front row. As we've seen so many times before this season, someone else leads early and then Larson runs them down and takes over. This night was no different. Gio Selzy led the first First seven laps and then Larson came through on lap eight with a big slider to take control. Larson went unchallenged the rest of the way to take his incredible seventh all-star win in a row. It was the first time in history someone has won seven in a row with the series. Rico Abreu hard charged his way from 13th to finish second with Gio Selzy third, Brian Brown fourth, and Shane Stewart in fifth. With Corey Eliason finish, finishing seventh and Aaron Reitzel back in 12th, Eliason chopped another 10 points out of Reitzel's lead with the margin down to 104 points heading to Sunday at Husets. We found out after the race that Larson somehow drove the last part of the feature, missing one of his contact lenses after it fell out. This guy doesn't even need to be able to see to win sprint car races at this point. Really, really crazy stuff. Yesterday, the All-Stars closed out a busy four-race stretch at the reopened Husset Speedway with $20,000 going to the winner. Larson was looking for his eighth series win in a row, and things were going that direction early with Larson again going quick time, this time by three-tenths over second. But things went sideways on the night for Larson early in his heat race. Coming to the end of the second lap, Larson slid high out of turn four and banged the front stretch wall. The contact flattened the right rear tire, causing a caution and sending Larson to the work area. The crew was able to get Larson's car fixed and back on the racetrack. Not long after, though, on a lap four restart, Larson got high into turn one and clipped the outside wall with his right rear. The contact sent Larson flipping wildly with the car coming to rest on its side. Larson walked away from the crash, but his night was done after that. With Larson out of the picture, that meant we'd see a new winner for the first time in eight races. In the feature, it was Kerry Madsen on the pole with Corey Eliason to his outside. Madsen led the early going, but this race turned into a dogfight between Madsen and Eliason. The 2M led the first 11 laps, but contact with the wall in lap traffic allowed Eliason to take over at lap 12. Things stayed tight, though, and Madsen recovered a handful of laps later to get back to the front on lap 17. With more lap traffic for the leaders to navigate, Eliason used the 44 of Trey Starks to keep Madsen pinned on the bottom and take back the lead on lap 23. Madsen stayed trapped on the bottom and that el let Eliason get away. The 26 held on over the final 13 laps to grab his first all-star win of the season. Dominic Selzy finished second, Kerry Madsen third, Ian Madsen fourth, and Rico Abreu was fifth. Eliason's win combined with a six for Aaron Reitzel now sees the points lead down to 92. After what looked like it might turn into a runaway third championship for Reitzel, that doesn't look so easy now with Eliason chopping 72 points out of the lead in recent weeks. Eliason is also the hottest driver in the series besides Kyle Larson. 
Even though Larson's incredible streak came to an end yesterday, don't expect him to slow down at all in the upcoming weeks. He'll be a favorite to win wherever he goes for the remainder of the th uh, of the season. Thanks to Jacob Seelman's Twitter, I saw that Larson has 28 wins this season, including 23 since May 30th. He's done that between the USAC Midgets, the All-Stars, the Word of Outlaws. Uh, and with his 13 All-Star wins this season, I still find it incredibly interesting that he's yet to win a heat race with the series. I know I, I keep tweeting that out and people keep saying, yeah, but it's the format. Yeah, he doesn't need to win heat races when he goes quick time. And I understand all of those things. I absolutely do. But it's still mind-blowing to me that just somehow he hasn't snuck up there and won a heat race. Uh, just blows me away for somebody that's had as, as much success this season as he's had. The All-Stars now have a break before returning to racing on August 21st at the I-96 Speedway. The USAC National Sprint Cars in Indiana Sprint Week did lose Lincoln Park and Bloomington to rain, but Sunday we did get the conclusion to the week at Tri-State Speedway. Justin Grant entered the night as the uh, week points leader, but things were tight at the top, and the title was very much still up for grabs. In the feature, Kyle Cummins started on the pole with Chris Windham on the front row. After a few attempts to get the race started, Windham officially led the first lap, but from there it was all Cummins out front. He led the rest of the way to take the Indiana Sprint Week finale and his fifth series win at Tri-State. Shane Cotter was second, Chase Stockton third, Garrett Aiken fourth, and Chris Windham finished in fifth. With Chase Stockton finishing third and Justin Grant back in 13th, Stockton was able to sneak up and win the Sprint Week title. Justin Grant continues to lead the season-long standings over Stockton and Windham. The USAC National Sprint Cars are back for their next points-paying event on August 27th at Kokomo Speedway. There's also a show at um, IRP and Kokomo in there as well. I guess Lucas Hall Raceway Park in there as well um, in, com in the coming weeks, but the next points paying event is August 27th. Even though much of the late model world was fixated on the World of Outlaws weekend at Kokomo, which we ultimately lost the weather, there was still some late model action elsewhere across the country this weekend. Chubb Frank won a 5,000 to win unsanctioned show at Thunder Mountain Speedway. Jimmy Mars and James Giassi won at Gondic Law Speedway. Peyton Looney won with the Comp Camps Super Dirt Series at Legit uh, Raceway Park. Ross Bales won with the Carolina Clash at Cherry and Zach Dome won Sunday at Richmond. If you want to see more late model winners, you can find those at dirtunder.com. Another sprint car action, Bill Baylog won again with the IRA at Langley County Speedway on Friday. He continues to stretch out his points lead over Scotty Neitzel and Jeremy Schultz. Adam Trimble won the 305 Nationals at Belleville, Kansas. Cap Henry beat Buddy Kofoid and Parker Price Miller to win at Attica. And Danny Dietrich swept the Pennsylvania weekend with wins Friday at Williams Grove, Saturday at Lincoln, and Sunday at Trailway. In the Northeast, Stuart Friesen grabbed wins at Fonda and Albany, Saratoga. Matt uh, Shepard swept at Outlaw Speedway, and Dave Marcucci one at Land of Legends. If you want to see more from the Northeast weekend, you can check that out at dirttrackdigest.com. There's a bunch more racing on tap this weekend with the World of Outlaws Late Models at Beaver Dam tomorrow, um, and then at Cedar Lake this weekend for the USA Nationals. The USAC Midgets head to the Northeast starting tomorrow for Eastern Midget Week. The 360 Nationals are at Knoxville. The World of Outlaws Sprint Cars are at Peavely, and there's a lot more else going on. We'll talk about more of that as the week progresses. Uh, don't forget tonight, too, is the World of Outlaws Late Model Series for iRacing. Um, you can watch that live tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern at twitch.com slash iRacing and iRacing.com slash live. There are a couple of shows on the streaming schedule for today. Uh, as usual, Flow Racing has USAC 24-7. Um, they also have the IMCA Dirt Nights Tour from the Clay County Fair Speedway. And then Bridgeport Speedway has Hyper 600 Speed Week, which includes 600cc non-wing, 270 micro sprints, and slingshots. You can watch that on Fast 4 Media. Uh, if you want to see that full streaming schedule, you can find that at dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Um, I also wanted to point out, too, if you didn't get a chance last week, uh, make sure to check out Dirt Tracker Conversations Episode 1 with Ayrton Jeniton. You can find that in this podcast feed or on YouTube. Uh, pretty neat stuff uh, with Ayrton there, kind of a sprint car up and, uh, up and comer. Um, and I'll do more of those uh, conversation shows as we go forward. But uh, go take a listen to that if you haven't done so yet. Uh, that's it for the show for this Monday. You can find Dirt Tracker daily on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or where you get podcasts. Please subscribe and leave a review. That certainly helps out the show. You can also watch the show every day on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, subscribe, like, comment there as well. Uh, you can email the show at info at dirttracker.com. And you can follow along at facebook.com slash dirttracker twitter.com slash dirt tracker and the website itself dirt tracker.com you can follow me personally on twitter at justin underscore feeder and don't forget to sign up for the dirt tracker weekly newsletter on the site uh, i also have uh, uh, dirt tracker uh, on tiktok um, until the president takes that down you can find me on tiktok as well um, that's it for the show today hope everybody has a good monday we will see you tomorrow for more dirt tracker daily